Hey, good morning, folks. It is Saturday, August the 17th. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Let's uh, read Jeremiah chapters 11 through 14 today. And uh, as we get started, let's pray together. Holy Father, how wonderful and amazing you are to us. And we ask for your blessings today as we ask for your forgiveness. Teach us and lead us through your word today in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so Judah chapter, I mean, uh, not Judah, Jeremiah chapter 11. Judah is urged to return and obey the covenant established when God brought them out of Egypt. God had kept his word, uh, but the people had refused to follow his direction. The curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 through 68 would come upon them. The Lord tells Jeremiah again, do not pray for this people in verse 14. The men of Anathoth threatened to kill Jeremiah for his prophecies, but the Lord told him not to worry, that he would, they would not destroy him, but he, God, would destroy the men of Anathoth. Okay, so in chapter 12, Jeremiah asked the Lord, why did the wicked prosper? The Lord is merciful and long-suffering toward our rebellion. And that's the, that's the crux of it right there. God doesn't want to see people destroyed. He wants them to turn to come to Him. He gives them plenty of time so that they are without excuse uh, whenever they are judged. Uh, God wants to give everybody time to realize the folly of opposing Him and seeking self-pleasure. He wants all to return to Him. But there will come a day when He will call into account every man, woman, and child. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In chapter 13, the ruined sash incident or the ruined belt. God told Jeremiah to go, go and buy and bury and then dig up a belt or a sash after it had been ruined and of no more use. He tells Jeremiah that Judah was like this belt. They were supposed to cling to him, but they have become useless. The Lord says, As surely as the wine bottles are filled with wine, so the people of Jerusalem would drink the bitter wine of God's wrath. I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but will destroy them. In chapter 14, the people were suffering because of a drought in the land that God had brought on them, punishing them for their sins. Once again, the Lord tells Jeremiah, do not pray for this people for their good. I will not accept them. How horrible it must be to be past the point of forgiveness and mercy. Other non-prophets were telling the people that they were safe and that they would have peace, but God did not send them or speak to them. They were saying whatever they thought would profit them. The Lord said, yes, both prophet and priest go about in a land they do not know, uh, meaning that they would be taken captive to another land. The peace and safety that they prophesied would not be their experience. Our thought for today is wholehearted living for the Lord provides the assurance that all things work together for good. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Christ is revealed as the hope of Israel, the Savior. Christ is the only hope of all mankind, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. God bless you. Have a great day.